Hello everyone. So I, uh, in lieu of class today, I wanted to take a few minutes to um, record a couple of videos to help um, you uh, grasp some of the material here in sections 1.2 and 1.3 in particular. I know the uh, parts on uh, the uh, private language argument are particularly difficult, or can be. And so I want to um, try to help you see what's going on there. All right, so the first uh, I want to talk about in regards to um, section 1.3, I want to talk about what exactly is at issue and why um, Appiah, why our author Appia, is moved from a discussion of Descartes and Descartes' dualism and some issues with that into his discussion of Wittgenstein. And so Wittgenstein, that's the, um, how to pronounce the uh, W-I-T-T-G-E-N-S-T-E-I-N uh, philosopher. Wittgenstein, V sound. Okay, so what's at issue with the private language uh, passages, an argument uh, that Appia talks about? Well, first, go back to uh, pages uh, 5 and 6 and in section 1.2, and you see how Appia has made um, a point of uh, specifying these five different aspects of uh, Descartes' uh, philosophy of mind. The fact that he's a dualist, right, it holds that body and mind are separate. Um, and that's one of the things that Appiah goes on to uh, talk about primarily in the passage of pages that follow, page 6. So in 7, uh, 8, and 9, uh, and, and 10 as well, uh, Appiah is talking about Descartes' dualism and the problem, what he identifies as um, Descartes' problem, right? This the problem of interaction between uh, body and mind. If the body is supposed to be physical and the mind is not physical and not even in space, um, so Appia discusses the problem, you know, various issues with that in pages uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten, really. And then um, starting page eleven, and then going into section one point three, which starts at page twelve, Appia brings in the issues of private language. And how he gets there is um, really uh, from the second point or second aspect of Descartes' philosophy that um, Appia uh, pinpoints, namely, um, so this is the second point from page six, where Appia writes, second, what he, Descartes, thinks you really are yourself uh, is a mind. Uh, since, you, you're, since you are your mind and minds are totally independent of bodies, you could still exist even without a body. But then he goes on to, to the third point. Excuse me, this is the real uh, heart here of the matter. Uh, for the private language sections, this is the third point here. Uh, your mind, he says, uh, for, De uh, for Descartes, your mind and your thoughts are the things you know best. Um, right, so, and then on uh, page 11, he talks about, for how for Descartes, um, this is the first new paragraph, he says, uh, there's a strong contrast between behaviorism and Descartes' view. Descartes thought, uh, Descartes, excuse me, Descartes thought belief was a private matter. And here Appiah has shifted from sensations and thinking and everything that um, Descartes was talking about to the idea of belief, but really belief and sensations, thinking and all this uh, go, together, go together for Descartes. So, so Appiah says, right, Descartes thought belief was a private matter. Uh, and that had two consequences, Appiah says. First, that you know for sure what you believe, and secondly, that only you know for sure what you believe. And then he says, uh, goes on and says, the trouble with Descartes' view of mind is that it, all, that it makes it very hard to see how we can know about other minds at all. Right. So here we have then the, the major issue that Appy is going to be um, getting into with the private language argument uh, section. Namely, all right, well, what are, the comp what are the consequences, what are the implications if we say that thinking, um, which again for Descartes is a very wide uh, notion, which includes not only belief, but also sensations, uh, feelings, thoughts, wishing, willing, all these things, right? Um, uh, but so Descartes uh, held that these are essentially private, right? And only you know them, and you know them best, as, as uh, Appiah is uh, getting on to here. And so then this leads us into the private language sections, um, because uh, one way of getting at this idea that our um, sensations, our thoughts, beliefs, and so forth are essentially private in the way that Descartes seemed to think they are, is to talk about naming them, right? So if it makes sense to say that 
um, my uh, feeling of pain, for example, if I stub my toe, um, if I have a toothache or whatever, if it makes sense to say that that um, sensation of pain is something that only I can know and that no one else can know, um, uh, know about, uh, then it makes sense, uh, would seem to follow that you could name that sensation give it a private name, right, because it's private because only you know what it is. And so the idea is that um, for the private language sections that follow this, then uh, the central idea is, look, if it makes sense to say that, as Descartes seems to, that our sensations are essentially private, our thoughts and so forth are essentially private, then it ought to make sense as well that we could name those sensations, uh, talk about them, at least to ourselves, because no one else can understand what we're naming. Uh, since they're supposed to be uh, essentially uh, private. And so therefore the whole point of the private lang language sections is to try to show that it does not make sense uh, to say that we could name uh, a sensation that no one else could know about. Uh, and so therefore since it's not supposed to make sense to be able to name a sensation that no one else can know about, the whole idea of there being a sensation that no one else can know about, right, the, uh, in the sense that they're private, right, that whole idea uh, falls apart. And so that's the main point. And that's the bridge from going talking about Descartes, as Appiah does talking about Descartes' dualism, um, and talking about the uh, fact that for Descartes, our minds are essentially private. So the shift from that into the private language sections um, hopefully makes more sense now. And so in the next video, we'll go on and talk a bit more about the uh, argument or the way that uh, Appiah inter interprets Wittgenstein's argument.